In the world of content creation, there's often a lot of products that we need to use to make things happen. Whether it's photography equipment, lighting equipment, or even videography equipment, the list really does go on forever. But quite often in a lot of creative communities, there tends to be a lot of younger creators who feel that they need to continuously upgrade their equipment or have the best of the best to produce their best work. This absolutely happens in the photography community, which I am obviously a part of being a photographer. And this is something that I've experienced from a very young age when doing photography. I feel like it's quite often stuff that's pushed on you from a very young age, you know, better lighting equipment, better camera equipment. One of the examples that I'll use is that a lot of people tend to ask when they're a younger photographer, what camera do you use? And they'll ask this question to a lot of professional photographers, trying to see what camera they use so then they can go and take the exact sort of same photos or take the same quality of photos. And unfortunately, this is something you find out very quickly, whether you're a photographer, whether you're another type of artist, that doesn't necessarily make a difference in your art. If you upgrade your equipment and you're getting the best of the best, it doesn't necessarily mean that your artworks or your work is going to get any better. And in this video today, we're going to be talking about this a little bit more and why I specifically have this feeling towards this whole mantra of needing to upgrade your equipment or have the best equipment. I don't believe that it's always going to be the thing that will make a difference with your art and with your work and especially as a content creator these days. Products are continuously pushed on us as if we need them and even if we don't need them, we are tempted to buy them. So this is what we're going to be talking about today and let's get into it. But if you're new here, my name is Kaylee, and I'm a beauty and fashion photographer based near Sydney, Australia, but I'm also a content creator and I started this channel a few years ago to talk about all things content creation, freelancing, business and social media. And in this video today, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about why buying more expensive gear won't necessarily make you a better creator. So to start off with, as I mentioned, I am a photographer myself and I've been doing photography for over 50 15 years now, pretty much since the age of around 15, 16 years old, which is definitely half my lifetime ago now. But with stating that fact, I have been doing it for a very long time. And I remember having those feelings as a young photographer and as someone who had started doing content creation years and years and years ago, I wanted to have the best of the best. I wanted to find out what all of my favorite photographers were using in terms of their equipment and specifically their camera and lenses. I wanted to know what they were using so I could try and replicate that same quality in my work. Little did I know that that was not going to be the defining factor of how my work would improve. And it actually didn't make that big of a difference at all, unfortunately. I remember this one specific instance where I was so desperate to upgrade to the 5D Mark II. This was quite an expensive camera at the time and it really was the industry standard. Uh, the Canon 5D Mark II was one of the most popular cameras out there. One of the most popular SLR cameras at the time. And I really wanted it because I knew that a lot of my favorite photographers, my favorite professional photographers were using this camera and I wanted to upgrade. I already owned a Canon 400D at the time and this was right back in probably 2011, early 2011 I think when I finally made the upgrade to the 5D Mark II and I'd had the 400D for probably about three or four years at that point. Now admittedly in those four years or so I had really had the chance to experiment and I was using that camera all the time so four years is a good amount of time to hold on to a sort of cheaper smaller camera and really feel the need to maybe upgrade after that point, but that camera still worked perfectly fine. Admittedly, it was not a full frame camera, which was the 5D Mark II, and that's why I wanted it. And I also wanted the nice lenses that went along with the 5D as well. So I really wanted to upgrade and I really thought that it was going to make all of the difference in my work. And suddenly I was going to be taken as a professional photographer because I had this more expensive camera. I thought my work was going to improve significantly. Very sadly, however, I found that when I made that upgrade, I didn't really notice any differences in my images at all. And that's literally because I wasn't necessarily caring about the specs of the camera itself in terms of how many megapixels it had or whether it was super detailed or anything like that necessarily. I just thought it would make my images look better overall and make them look like what my favorite photographer's work looked like. And it just didn't work that way. And you would think that someone that had been photographing for four years already would know that wouldn't be the case. But I still had this hope that like, if I got this more expensive camera, that it would make all the difference in my work. And unfortunately on my first photo shoot session, I basically didn't notice any difference at all. I mean, of course there were the minor differences where you'll see that, yeah, okay, your images are a lot bigger. You can blow them up a lot bigger. You can zoom in, crop more, being that that camera had a lot more megapixels. And also the fact that your images were just that bit sharper as well and a bit clearer. The lens kind of worked a bit more nicely on 
on it. But other than that, my work looked essentially the same. And I think I realized at that moment that having this camera was not gonna fix any of the issues that I had with my work. I was really going to have to push myself to evolve more with my work and to really start creating different things and experimenting with different things. Because if I didn't, I was going to stagnate with my work. And at the end of the day, that is really what most creatives go through. In lots of different creative communities, you will have the same thing happening. So like I said, whether you're a videographer, whether you're a painter, whether you're a makeup artist, there's always going to be the allure of more expensive gear to work with. And of course, certain things and at certain stages in your career, things will be appropriate to upgrade to. You will have those moments where you'll know when you need to upgrade to something, when that is going to make an actual difference with what you're doing. And it may be unavoidable at that point. But having said that, I think it's really important to also use what you already have and to be able to really work with what you've got at this point. Because sometimes that can actually push you to evolve even more and really push you to evolve your skill set because you're working with a lot less. So imagine if you're doing amazing things with such minimal materials and stuff that is not considered the best of the best in terms of equipment. It really does speak volumes to be able to work with what you already have and to push your limits with what you've already got. I think the really big problem with this is that a lot of people tend to delay evolving their work or to really work on their craft until they get this more expensive equipment because they keep thinking to themselves, well, when I have that better camera or when I have that better paintbrush set or when I have that better lighting setup, then my video will be great or then my photography will be great or then my artwork will be great and it's just not the case. A lot of people delay building upon their skill sets in the hope that this better equipment will kind of take care of it for them. I've always stuck to a really minimal kit with my photography and I've kind of done this purposefully because again I've wanted to see what I can create with having minimal equipment over the years and I think that overall it's really worked for me. And using another example here with photography, I've recently in the previous years really wanted to get into travel photography more and unfortunately Unfortunately, a lot of the lenses that I have are not really suitable for travel photography in the sense that a lot of them are not very wide angle or they're not really a telephoto lens either. So unfortunately, I can't really zoom out too far and I can't really zoom in too far. And a lot of my images are kind of at that midpoint range for focal lengths that would be great for portraiture, which is what I currently do in my business. So instead, I've kind of had to be a little bit creative with this. And when I actually bought my 400D many, many years ago, I actually had it come with a couple of different kit lenses. And one of the kit lenses was a 90 to 300 millimeter telephoto lens. Now the lens itself was not great. It was really just kind of like a plasticky kind of lens. And I really didn't use it that often because again, I was still more interested in portraiture back then. Although I still love travel, I was using the portrait lenses a lot more. I actually kept that entire lens set though. And I don't know why I did. I just kind of did it out of, okay, well maybe one day I'll get to use them. And even when it got to a point a few years ago where I was looking at that lens and I was like, I should really just get rid of it. Um, I'm probably never going to use it. It's a really cheap lens. Funnily, enough before I went to New Zealand last year I remembered I had that lens and I really felt like I was becoming a bit more limited with my travel photography because again I was using more portraiture style lenses and because I've upgraded cameras since then so now I use a Panasonic Lumix S5 and I currently use that for a lot of my video content creation photography kind of work and travel photography so what I decided to do with that instead of buying a whole new kit of lenses or another camera or anything like that I actually went and bought a converter and it was a Sigma converter that actually allowed me to convert from my Panasonic Lumix to a Canon lens. So now I can actually put that telephoto lens onto my mirrorless camera and onto my Lumix. So I can use that for my travel photography. Now, is the quality amazing? No. Are they the most detailed images you're ever going to see? Absolutely not. But it is giving me a whole new realm of movement to experiment with my travel photography, which I really love. And I love the fact that I can use a telephoto lens to get in really close for a lot of detailed shots when traveling. I find that I'm more attracted to shots where I'm zooming in a lot more. I think that that's maybe just alongside my beauty photography. I just prefer those kinds of shots as well, which are macro and kind of showing details. And I really love that with travel photography as well, because it really gives you a a different perspective on the landscapes and it's really kind of giving you that scale too. So that's just an example of how I'm making my really old lenses work for me at the moment. I am not about to go and spend thousands of dollars on a new lens just yet. I do feel like I need more practice with my travel photography before I really want to decide on what I'm going to buy anyway. But I think for now this is absolutely fine. This is great for me to experiment and I think if you've got any similar equipment at home that you can really make use of I would highly encourage you to do this because sometimes it can spark a little bit of creativity within you as well when you're using some of these tools that you thought
lot didn't even have much worth. So it is not always a direct indicator of whether your work is going to be great or not when you spend a lot of money on expensive equipment. It is absolutely not an indicator of that and experimenting and practice is key. So whether you think you should invest in more equipment for your YouTube videos, maybe your videography projects, your photography projects, your painting, whatever kind of artist or creative you are, just remember that that is not always going to make you a better creator and it's not going to always help you evolve your work. Remember to experiment and remember to practice that is always going to be key in the end. Well, thank you so much for watching this video today and I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure you do because I'll be posting a lot more videos in future. Let me know down in the comment section below if you've ever been through this process as well of feeling like you need to invest in equipment or maybe you have invested in equipment before and then realized like me that it wasn't going to be the determining factor of whether your work was going to be good or not. I want to hear all of your opinions and thoughts in the comment section below. Also, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next on my channel because I'm always open to taking requests. But thank you so much for watching this video today and I'll see you in the next one.